John? This is right. Anybody to home? It's Lewis Hale. Do you think they'd be up and about? It's, it's past 8 o'clock. You go check the barn, Harry. Probably didn't hear the wagon drive up. Sure, Mr. Hale. Just want to talk to you about maybe going in with me on a party telephone. Might be a good notion for the both of us. Hello? Come in, Mr. Hale. How do, Mrs. Wright? Oh, it's cold, ain't it? Is it? Mind if I come into the kitchen here? Get warm by the stove? Mind? No, I don't mind much. Are you feeling well, Mrs. Ray? Do you need any help? Me? No, Mr. Hale. I'm just taking a little rest here in the rocking chair. Don't you worry. I'll get back to my chores in a minute. Well, I want to see John. <laughs> Can't I see John? No. Ain't he home? Yes. He's home. Then why can't I see him? Because he's dead. Dead. That's what I said. Why, where is he? Bed. Why? What did he die of? He died of a rope round his neck. Harry! Harry! You best come on in here! What's the matter, Mr. Hill? I'm gonna need your help upstairs. Mrs. Wright says John is dead. Dead? Yeah. Come on. There he is, Mr. Hale. Got a rope around his neck. Well, take it off. Well, maybe he's still... No, no, no. He's dead, all right. Well, maybe we should... No, I... It's better not to touch anything. I guess not. Better leave this for Sheriff Peters to sort. Mrs. Wright? How is she? Just sitting in that rocking chair. Her hands pleating and unpleating her apron. She don't seem right in her head. Who did this, Miss Wright? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you sleeping in the bed with him? Yes. But I was on the inside. Somebody slipped a rope round his neck and strangled him. And you didn't wake up. I didn't wake up. I sleep sound. They say a straw broke the camel's back. Hard to imagine how something so small could cause such damage. Such a little thing light as a feather. Good evening and welcome to another installment of WCT On The Air, the broadcast arm of the Whittier Community Theater. Tonight we present a domestic drama written by Susan Glassbell and adapted for this audio presentation by Susan C. Hunter. Let us take you back now to the rural Midwest around 1916 as we present Trifles. Watch your step, ladies. The porch is icy. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Hale, for coming with us today to tell us your story once again, now that we're at the scene. My wife and I are here to help out however we can, Mr. Henderson. Well, I guess, Mrs. Hale, you and the sheriff's wife here can gather her things. Gentlemen, I guess we'll go upstairs first, and then out to the barn and around there. You are convinced that there was nothing important here, nothing that would point to any motive. As county attorney, I must ask, has anything been moved 
Are things just as you left them yesterday, Sheriff? It's just the same. When it dropped below zero last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out this morning to make a fire for us. No use getting pneumonia with a big case on. But I told him not to touch anything except the stove. And you know Frank. Somebody should have been left here yesterday. Oh, yesterday? When I had to send Frank to the Moore Center for the man who went crazy? I want you to know I had my hands full yesterday. I knew you could get back from Omaha by today. And as long as I went over everything here myself... Nothing important here in the kitchen anyway. Just ladies' things. Here's a nice mess. No, her fruit. It did freeze. She worried about that when it turned so cold. She said the fire'd go out and her jars would break. <laughs> well, can you beat the women? Held for murder and warned about her preserves. <laughs> I guess before we're through, she may have something more serious than preserves to worry about. <laughs> well, women are used to worrying over trifles. And yet, for all their worry, what will we do without the ladies? <clears throat> Dirty towel. Not much of a housekeeper, would you say, ladies? There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. Well, to be sure, Mrs. Hale. And yet, I know there are some Dixon County farmhouses which do not have such roller towels. <laughs> Those towels get dirty awful quick. Men's hands aren't always as clean as they might be. Ah, loyal to your sex, I see. But you and Mrs. Wright were neighbors. I suppose you were friends, too. I've not seen much of her of late years. I have not been in this house. It, it's more than a year. And why was that? You didn't like her? I liked her well, well enough. Farmer's wives have their hands full, Mr. Henderson. And then... Yes? It never seemed a very cheerful place. No, it's not cheerful. I shouldn't say she had the homemaking instinct. Well, I don't know who's right had either. You mean they didn't get on very well? No, I don't mean anything. But I don't think a place would be any cheerfuler for John Wright's being in it. I'd like to talk more on that a little later. I want to get the lay of things upstairs now. I suppose anything my wife does will be all right. She's going to take in some clothes for her, you know, a few little things. We left in such a hurry yesterday. Yet, but I'd like to see what you take, Mrs. Peters. And keep an eye out for anything that might be of use to us. Yes, Mr. Henderson. Let's go up to the bedroom first. I'd hate to have the men coming into my kitchen, snooping around and criticizing. Oh, of course, it's no more than their duty. <sighs> Duty's all right, but, but I guess that deputy sheriff that came out to make the fire might have cleaned up a little of this. I wish I'd thought of that sooner. Seems mean to talk about her for not having things slicked up when she had to come away in such a hurry. Look over here on top of the stove. She had bread set. She was letting it rise under that cloth. Never got to put it in to bake. Oh, it's a shame about her fruit. I wonder if it's all gone. Yes, I think there's some here that's all right, Mrs. Peters. Oh, yes, here. Oh, this is cherries, too. Oh, I declare, I believe that's the only one. She'll feel awful bad after all her hard work and the hot weather. Oh, I remember the afternoon I put up my cherries last summer. Whew. Well, it's certainly cold in here now. Oh, right was tight-fisted. Hmm. I think maybe that's why she kept so much to herself. She didn't even belong to the ladies' aid. I suppose she felt she couldn't do her part. And then, you don't enjoy things when you feel shabby. She used to wear pretty clothes and be lively when she was Minnie Foster, one of the town girls singing in the choir. But that... Oh, that was 30 years ago. Is this all you was to take me? She said she wanted an apron. Funny thing to want, for there isn't much to get you dirty in jail, goodness knows. Mm -hmm. But I suppose just to make her feel more natural. She says it was in the top drawer in this cupboard. Ah, yes, here. And then her little shawl that always hung behind the door. Ah, yes, here it is. Oh, 
Mrs. Peters. Yes, Mrs. Hale. Do you think she did it? Oh, I, I don't know. Well, I don't think she did. Asking for an apron and her little shawl? Worrying about her fruit? Mr. Peters says it looks bad for her. Mr. Henderson is awful sarcastic in his speech, and he'll make fun of her for saying she didn't wake up. Well, I guess John Wright didn't wake up when they were slipping that rope under his neck. No, it's strange. It must have been done awful crafty and still. They say it was such a funny way to kill a man, rigging it all up like that. Well, that's just what my husband said. There was a gun in the house. He says that's what he can't understand. Mr. Henderson said, coming out, that what was needed for this case was a motive. Something to show anger or a sudden feeling. Mm, well, I don't see any signs of anger around here. Well, well now, isn't that strange? Hmm. Table's wiped to here. Then the rest is still full of crumbs. Hmm. Huh. I wonder how they're finding things upstairs. I hope she had it a little more read up up there. You know, it seems kind of sneaking. Locking her up in town and then coming out here and, and trying to get her own house to turn against her. But, Mrs. Hale, the law is the law. I suppose it is. <laughs> now, you better loosen up your things, Mrs. Peters. You won't feel them when you go out. Look here. She was piecing a quilt. Oh, it's a log cabin pattern. Pretty, isn't it? I wonder if she was going to quilt it or just knot it. <laughs> they wonder if she was going to quilt it or just knot it. <laughs> Frank's fire didn't do much up there, did it? Well, let's get out to the barn and get that cleared up. I don't know as there's anything so strange. I'll take an odd time up with little things while we're waiting for them to get the evidence. I don't see that it's anything to laugh about. Oh, of course. They've got awful important things on their minds. <laughs> Mrs. Peters, look at this quilt square. Here, here, this is the one she was working on, and look at the sewing. All the rest of it has been so nice and even. And look at this. It's all over the place. Well, why, it looks as if she didn't know what she was about. Just, oh, um, what are, what are you doing, Mrs. Oh, Hale? Just, just pulling out a stitch or two that's not sewed very good. The bad sewing always makes me fidgety. Uh, I don't think we ought to touch things. Oh, I'll just finish up this end. Mrs. Peters? Yes, Mrs. Hale? What do you suppose she was so nervous about? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if she was nervous. I sometimes so awful queer when I'm just tired. Well, I must get these things wrapped up. They may be through sooner than we think. Mm. I wonder where I could find a piece of paper and string. In that cupboard, maybe? Why, here's a bird cage. Did she have a bird, Mrs. Hale? Well, I don't know whether she did or not. Well, I've not been here for so long. There was a man around last year selling canaries cheap. But I don't know if she took one. Maybe she did. <laughs> she used to sing real pretty herself. Seems funny to think of a bird here. But she must have had one, or why would she have a cage? I wonder what happened to it. I suppose maybe the cat got it? No, she didn't have a cat. She's got that feeling some people have about cats, being afraid of them. Hmm. My cat got into her cell, and she was real upset and asked me to take it out. Oh, my sister Bessie was like that. Queer, ain't it? Why, look at the door. It's broke. One hinge is pulled apart. Looks as if someone must have been rough with it. Why, yes. Oh, I wish if they was going to find any evidence, they'd be about it. Uh, I don't like this place. But I'm awful glad you came with me, Mrs. Hale. It would be lonesome for me sitting here alone. It would, wouldn't it? But, but I tell you what I do wish, Mrs. Peters. I wish I had come over sometimes when she was here. I, I wish I had. But of course you were awful busy, Mrs. Hale. 
your house and your children. Oh, I could have come. I stayed away because it, it weren't cheerful, and, and that's why I ought to have come. I, I've never liked this place. Maybe because it's down in a hollow and you don't see the road. I don't know what it is, but it's a lonesome place and always was. I wish I had come over to see Minnie Foster sometimes. I can see now. Well, that... now, you mustn't reproach yourself, Mrs. Hale. Somehow we just don't see how it is with other folks until something comes up. Not having children makes less work, but it makes a quiet house. And, and ride out to work all day and and no company when he did come in. Did you know John Wright, Mrs. Peters? Not to know him. I've seen him in town. They say he was a good man. <laughs> yes, good. He didn't drink, and he kept his word as well as most, I guess. And he paid his debts. But he was a hard man, Mrs. Peters. Just to pass the time of day with him? Bah! like a raw wind that gets to the bone. I should think she would have wanted a boy. But what do you suppose went with it? I don't know, unless it got sick and died. You weren't raised round here, were you? You didn't know her. Not till they brought her yesterday. She, <laughs> well, come to think of it, she was kind of like a bird herself. She was sweet and pretty, and kind of timid and, and fluttery. How she did change. I tell you what, Miss Peters, why don't you take the quilt in with you? It might take up her mind. Why, I think that's a real nice idea, Mrs. Hale. There couldn't possibly be any objection to it, could there? Now, just what would I take? I wonder if her patches are in this closet and, and her things. Oh, well, here's a basket. I expect this has got sewing things in it. Oh, <laughs> what a pretty box. Huh. Oh, it looks like something somebody would give you. Uh, maybe her scissors are in here. Why, there's something wrapped up in this piece of silk. <laughs> Why, this isn't her scissors. <gasps> Mrs. Peters, <gasps> it's... It's the bird. But Mrs. Peters, oh, oh, look at it. Its neck. Look at its neck. It, it's all other side, too. Somebody, somebody wrung its neck. Well, ladies, have you decided whether she was going to quilt it or knot it? Uh, we think she was going to knot it. Well, that's interesting, I'm sure. Well, well, a bird cage, huh? Has the bird flown? We... We, we think the, the cat got it. Is there a cat? Well, not now. They're superstitious, you know. They, um, they leave. No sign at all of anyone having come in from the outside. Their own row. Now let's go up and go over it piece by piece. How would it have to been someone who knew just the right time to send me? <laughs> she liked the bird. She was going to bury it in that pretty box. When I was a girl, my kitten, there was a boy that took a hatchet, and before I could get there, if they hadn't held me back, I would have hurt him. I wonder how it would seem never to have had any children around. No, Wright wouldn't like the bird. A thing that sang? She used to sing. He killed that, too. We don't know who killed the bird. I knew John Wright. It was an awful thing was done in this house that night, Mrs. Hale. Killing a man while he slept? Slipping a rope around his neck that his neck. choked the life out of choked him? Choked the life out of him! We don't know who killed him. We don't know. If there had been years and years of nothing... And then a bird to sing to you? It would be awful still after that bird was still. I know what stillness is. 
when we homesteaded in Dakota. And my first baby died after he was two years old. And me with no other than. Oh, how soon do you suppose they'll be through looking for the evidence? I know what stillness is. The law has got to punish crime, Mrs. Hale. I wish you'd seen Minnie Foster when she wore a white dress with blue ribbons and, and stood up there in the choir and sang. Oh, oh, I wish I'd come over here once in a while. That was a crime. That was a crime. Who is going to punish that? We mustn't take on. I might have known she needed help. I know how things can be for women. I tell you, it's queer, Mrs. Peters. We live close together, and we live far apart. But we all go through the same things. It's all just a, a different kind of the same thing. You know, if I was you, I wouldn't tell her that her fruit was gone. No, tell her it ain't. Tell her it's all right. Yeah, take this one jar to in to prove it to her. She, she may never know whether it was broke or not. Oh, my. It's a good thing the men couldn't <laughs> hear us. <laughs> Wouldn't they just laugh? Yeah. Getting all stirred up over a little thing like a dead canary. As if that could have anything to do with... Well, wouldn't they just laugh? Maybe they would. But maybe they wouldn't. No, Peters, it's all perfectly clear. Except for a reason for doing it. You know, juries, when it comes to women, if there was some definite thing, something to show, something to make a story about, a thing that would connect up with this strange way of doing it. Well, I've got the team around. Pretty cold out there. Thank you, Mr. Hale, but I'm going to stay here for a while by myself. You can send Frank out for me, can't you? I want to go over everything. I'm not satisfied we can't do better. Do you want to see what my wife is going to take in? I guess they're not very dangerous things the ladies have picked out. No... Mrs. Peters doesn't need supervising. For that matter, a sheriff's wife is married to the law. Ever think of it that way, Mrs. Peters? Not just that way. Married to the law. Uh, I just want you to come in here a minute, George. We ought to take a look at these windows. Oh, windows. We'll be right out, Mr. Hale. Yes, sir. Men, they just don't know. They just... Mrs. Peters, what are you doing with that box? Hush, they'll hear. But... Oh, dear, it won't fit in my purse. Do you know what you're doing? That dead canary could be evidence. Your husband You couldn't... heard them yourself, Mrs. Hale. All these things, they're just trifles. Nothing important. Why, they would just laugh if we showed them. Yes, they're coming back. I can't... I can't... Give it to me. I'll put it under my coat. Oh, Mrs. Hale. No, quickly. About all we can do for now. Not a scrap of evidence pointing to any motive. Well, Henry, at least we found out that she wasn't going to quilt it. She was going to... What do you call it, ladies? We call it... Not it, Mr. Henderson. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's presentation of Trifles and will join us again at WCT on the Air as we continue to provide entertainment to our community as well as an outlet for creative expression by local artists. Tonight's presentation was directed by Susan C. Hunter with graphics provided by Trevor Murphy. We featured the talents of Trevor Murphy, Cruz William Castillo, E. Caroline Murphy, 
Louis Krauss, Jesse Ornelas, Jenny Villa, and Candy Beth. This is your announcer, Roxy Lee, wishing you a pleasant evening. From prison bars has flown. Oh,